supplementary video for a blog post I made on powering the Dana uh, by AlphaSmart, the AlphaSmart Dana uh, word processing little laptop device. Um, you can get these on eBay. They don't make them anymore, but uh, you can get them on eBay pretty cheap. And a lot of people have them. And in fact, a lot of people, a lot of older people like them uh, because of their simplicity and, well, not so much the battery life on the Dana, but uh, the ease of getting the uh, text off of the machine, uh, it's ease of use. They're very popular machines with uh, writers and uh, sometimes older people. I uh, have given an Alpha Smart Dana to my own mother, who is 76, and uh, she loves it very much. She keeps it in a pocket on next to her uh, chair, and uh, any time a thought strikes her that she wants to write it down, she pulls out that Neo and... Uh, Puts it on her lap and starts writing and it's a wonderful machine with a great battery life very easy to use and uh, it's uh, easy to get the text off and and uh, put it on into your main computer and so uh, with that note uh, I have a commenter on a blog post I made about the Dana's battery life and how you can improve it and uh, she was 80 years old and she looked like she needed a um, helping hand in understanding how uh, to get the old battery out and uh, power it up with uh, double A's or other rechargeables um, or power brick which was the uh, a USB power brick which was uh, the topic of that particular blog post uh, so we're going to go through those options and I'm going to show in a little more detail how you do those things let's begin here's the Dana uh, wireless uh, it doesn't matter whether it's wireless or not these either one is fine um, they're great little machines they have uh, a lot of input and output that's very nice uh, I particularly like the fact that they take SD cards small ones not ones not newer ones that are like uh, over two gigabytes um, and you can write your files onto that SD card and they're safe from power off errors uh, like uh, the Dana is especially notorious for being uh, battery hungry it eats batteries pretty quickly um, or when it's in, got a rechargeable battery it eats that rechargeable battery pretty quickly and you got to always keep it plugged in to charge it up um, that's because of the palm uh, operating system that these things run uh, they, uh, for some reason, that operating system uh, has a very high power draw relative to other machines like this uh, when the machine is off. So if I put in a set of regular alkalines in here, uh, even if I keep it off and just put it on a shelf, three weeks later, the thing will be dead. Uh, when you have it on with the backlight running and you're typing on it, it can last many hours, uh, I think probably about 20 hours before it starts uh, telling you that the batteries are low. But the especially problematic part is how much power it draws when it's actually off. That is the only negative about these machines. So we're going to, uh, and in fact, all of these are getting pretty close to 10 or 15 years old. So uh, the rechargeable power cell that they have inside is probably not going to hold much of a charge if it holds any charge at all so the first thing we're going to do is get rid of that battery and uh, show you how to do that so that you can put regular uh, AA batteries in here uh, either regular alkalines or rechargeables work however if you put rechargeables in here you won't be able to recharge it through the cable the way you did with the original power supply you'll have to take them out and put them in a external charger and charge them up anytime you need them to be charged the positive of that is that if you put alkalines in here uh, the recharger the recharging circuit will not cause those batteries to explode because it doesn't ever touch those batteries uh, and i'll show you why in a second uh, first there will be a screw right here if your machine is is bone stock and has never been opened up uh, years ago I removed that screw obviously and, and lost it so uh, first thing you do is unscrew this little screw right here that goes in this hole and then you can take the whole the panel sh 
shift it over that way and it just lifts right off and we'll set that aside. You'll notice that there is a Alpha Smart proprietary battery in here. This is the rechargeable battery and we're going to get that out of here. So uh, grab yourself something to wedge it out and we'll start by just pulling on this side because the spring's over here and you can work that battery out and it has a little plug right there and you'll just need to unhook that let's see there's a way to do this oh yeah okay it's a little hard to get out but we'll we don't particularly care about this plug anymore where is it attached it's attached over here okay okay you push down this little lever right here you'll see the bottom part of that lever there you push down and it'll release this this plug and so you unplug it uh, dispose of the battery how you want you can in fact rebuild this battery it's just three double a uh, alkaline or not alkalines but rechargeables NICAD rechargeables uh, set in parallel spot welded here and here uh, these ends are open well no they're not they're they don't okay they're blocked so they don't uh, touch these terminals at all but the the wire itself is uh, soldered in here and in here so now that we've got it unhooked and we've disposed of it we take this little plug and we can stick it in this little compartment and forget about it forever because we're never using that again at this point you can put oh look, there's some corrosion there uh, let's take care of that I'm gonna pause for a second all right I went and got some uh, distilled white vinegar uh, this is really great for getting rid of that battery corrosion and don't be too surprised if you see that battery corrosion because again these things are quite old and that will take a little bit of white vinegar very carefully don't do too much that's probably too much but we'll be okay with that get out your q-tips and uh, just dip your q-tip in there and just rub a little bit on soak that battery terminal real good both sides make sure you get all the corrosion out of there this stuff will remove that corrosion very easily you don't need to really scrub all that much and uh, check the other side just do it just in case and that's it it's it's gone so we pour our cap full of vinegar back in the bottle set that aside now um, we can at this point put in either alkalines or rechargeable double A's. Uh, either one will work. It doesn't matter which you use. And we can put the, well, put it on the right way. Uh, put the battery cover back on, just slide it over. And you can reattach that screw if you want to unscrew it anytime you. Uh, need to change the batteries again but uh, of course I didn't bother uh, and now uh, in most cases you're done uh, I don't know if I have any actual charge on those batteries I don't so I can't turn it on yet uh, remember again that the re rechargeable batteries that you put in here will not recharge from the cable uh, while they're in the machine because that charging circuit only attaches to this uh, thing and if you want to re if you want to attach the wires from that plug into the battery terminals you can require some soldering and some extra wires uh, most people don't bother I don't so anyway you're basically done here if that's all you want now keeping in mind that the Dana really drinks batteries hard uh, I have come up with the the theory that uh, you can actually power it from the USB port like it would be if it was plugged into a machine or a computer but if you plug it into a computer the Dana itself will go into USB mode and you'll only be able to transfer files back and forth um, and I thought hmm 
I wonder what will happen if I plug a power brick in there, a plain old USB power brick, uh, which you can use to power your cell phone or other things. Normally that is something that uses a mini USB or micro USB. Um, and then you use this cable to actually charge the battery. Um, do not make the mistake of sticking this cable into this port. This is your printer port. That is an out port. Um, and it's not supposed to have power on it. So uh, I'm not sure what will happen. Worst case scenario, it would fry your data. Um, best case scenario, uh, since this is an input port for the battery to charge it, it may not do anything at all, but um, I wouldn't take the chance. I wouldn't, I wouldn't plug that into the printer port. It's not what it's for. But you do have um, a female USB B port, USB dash B port, uh, which allows you to plug in a cable to power something else. And uh, for the purposes of demonstration, I have this short little USB A to B cable, which is the same cable that you use to plug into the computer. So you can use your old cable, uh, but I have this really short one just for uh, so I don't have coils of wire hanging around. Now, remember that this is USB A, USB dash A, this is USB dash B. And so if you're buying a cable, you'll want a USB A to B cable. Um, and so we plug in the USB B port, and of course I always get it upside down, no matter which way you put it in. And then the A part goes into this plug right here. Now that we've done that, you notice that the machine doesn't automatically turn on the way it would if you plugged it into your computer. Um, well, okay, probably because I haven't hit the power button. So I hit the power button, and it still doesn't turn on. But if I turn the machine on, maybe, unless I did something really weird. Hmm, I wonder why that doesn't work. I wonder if this cable's no good. Let me try that again, I'll pause. Okay, I'm back. Uh, got a different cable, it's longer of course, doesn't matter how long it is, but it is also USB-A to USB-B. So USB A to B, uh, we'll plug that into the power brick, again upside down <laughs> as always. Uh, we'll turn it on and we'll plug it into the, there, and that does turn on, okay. Uh, so it will turn on when you have uh, a power brick plugged into it. And of course we'll do the move stylus. Tap anywhere. Let's go ahead and do it. Uh, uh, what do you call this? Oops, wrong way. Let's do it right this time. Calibration is what this call is called. I didn't get that word right. And we'll go ahead and just accept the defaults here. And there we go. We're into Palm OS. We have 100% battery power. Uh, we can go into Alpha Word and start typing. Um, I can also open up a file I have already. Oh, well. Yep. Uh, we choose the uh, source. You can either choose an internal file, the internal storage, or the external SD card, or two of them. There are two ports for the uh, SD cards. I always save things to the external, or to the SD card, so that they never get lost. And uh, there we go. So, oh, I changed fonts on this one, okay. Um, and that's pretty much it. You can, uh, uh, I know the power brick, this is a, uh, I don't know how many milliamps this is, uh, it's 7,800 milliamps, so it will probably power the thing with the backlight on, like that, for uh, probably a couple days. 
I mean, you could, I mean, this thing has a lot of power in it. It stores a lot of power, much more than the, the AAA ba or AA batteries or even rechargeables. These are 2,800 milliamp hours. This is 7,800 milliamp hours. So you can uh, just imagine how much longer it, this thing will power the machine than these rechargeables or even regular alkalines. Um, it's quite easy to do. Uh, you can, if you have good batteries in it, you don't have to worry about uh, uh, having this uh, plugged in all the time. Although, um, I mean, well, it depends uh, how much you want to buy new batteries. Uh, this thing will keep the machine going in its sleep state for, oh, probably months. It is much, much more powerful than the uh, regular double A's or the rechargeables or the original rechargeable, which is probably quite dead. Uh, this thing will beat them all. So I think that's uh, all that I had for this. Um, I will put links in the description of this video below or on the blog post that I've made. I will put links to the uh, specific parts that you'll want, like the power brick, the uh, cable itself. Um, I might even put in some links for a battery charger and some rechargeable batteries just to make things uh, more sensible for people. And hopefully this was much more informative than I got into in the blog post, and it will help you to uh, keep your data going for the next 20, you know, 15, 20 years, uh, as long as these things will last. Uh, they are certainly really good machines, and they do deserve to have the one problem that they have uh, dealt with. Um, and they're just really excellent typing machines. That's it. Hopefully that was informative. Thank you very much for watching.